Due to the huge variety of applications, platforms, and services that are encompassed by the broad definition of fintech, the term fintech can sometimes be confusing to those who are not familiar with the industry. If you're still scratching your head and wondering, just what exactly is fintech, here's a rundown. The term financial technology is shortened to the portmanteau fintech. A catch-all word for any technology that is used to improve, streamline, digitize, or otherwise disrupt traditional financial services. The term fintech refers to programs, algorithms, and applications that can be used on desktop computers as well as mobile devices. In certain instances, it also incorporates hardware, such as piggy banks that are connected to the internet. The use of fintech platforms makes routine financial transactions possible, such as the depositing of checks, the transfer of funds between accounts, the payment of bills, and the application for financial help. In addition to this, they make technically complex ideas more accessible, such as peer-to-peer -peer lending and cryptocurrency exchanges. Payment processing, e-commerce transactions, accounting, and, more lately, support with government-assisted efforts like the Payroll Protection Program are all services that are provided by fintech, which is relied upon by businesses, PPP. As a result of the epidemic caused by the COVID-19 virus, an increasing number of companies are embracing fintech to accept contactless payments or to implement other tech-driven innovations. What does it mean to banks using fintech? The monitoring of account activity behind the scenes, for example, is one of the back-end operations that banks utilize fintech for. Banks also use fintech for consumer-facing solutions, such as the app that you use to check your account balance. Fintech is also used by banks in the process of underwriting loans. Individuals can access a variety of bank services, such as obtaining investment advice on their home computers and paying for products using their smartphones. Fintech allows for this accessibility. Financial Technology Firms The annual Forbes Fintech 50 list shines a focus on the most innovative and successful businesses in the sector. Stripe, a payment processor that is 10 years old and has a valuation of $95 billion, comes in first place on the 2022 list. Klarna, a Swedish company that has been in business for 16 years and provides customers with financing options for purchases made at a variety of big merchants, came in at number two on the list with a valuation of $46 billion. Several sub-industries are spawned from fintech, including Wealthtech, apps such as Wealthsimple, which is an online investment management service for Canadians, Investtech, apps such as Acorns, which allows users to round up purchases to the nearest dollar and invest the difference in a diversified portfolio, and insurance, such as Next Insurance, a mobile-first carrier. It affects practically every sector of the economy, geographic market, and business strategy imaginable. What is the process behind fintech? People and businesses now have access to more traditional forms of financial services through the use of cutting-edge, previously unavailable methods made possible by fintech. For instance, the mobile apps of many conventional banks now provide consumers with on-the-go access to a variety of banking services. These services include the capability to examine your account balance, transfer funds, or deposit a check. In the meanwhile, robo-advisors such as Betterment offer investing advice at a lower cost and with greater convenience than traditional face-to-face -face meetings with financial advisors. Automating many of the services that companies utilize, such as loan underwriting and real estate appraisals, is another application of fintech. Fintech companies can better understand their clients and power their marketing campaigns, product development, and underwriting with the use of artificial intelligence when combined with vast troves of consumer data. How has the field of fintech progressed? The fact that fintech is currently trending does not mean that it is a recently developed industry. The idea has been around for many years, even though Merriam-Webster just added the phrase to its lexicon in 2018. For example, automated teller machines, ATMs, and methods for authenticating signatures that were initially employed by banks in the 1860s were formerly considered to be at the forefront of innovation in the financial technology industry. In recent years, the term fintech has transitioned from being associated with scrappy startups to being an important component of established and heritage financial institutions. This change occurred as a result of several factors. Many of the largest banks in the world are increasingly forming partnerships with fintech businesses or launching their internal fintech efforts. For example, in 2016, Goldman Sachs used fintech to develop an online bank named Marcus. 
In 2019, JP Morgan Chase invested $25 million in several fintech firms. Even as some variants of fintech are failing, the industry as a whole has been demonstrating its worth despite the pandemic caused by the COVID-19 coronavirus. Digital transactions were allowed to take place at financial institutions across the United States, even if the Capital One cafes were momentarily closed because of lockdowns. These financial institutions were also able to offer COVID-19 assistance and services. What role does fintech play in my life? Generally speaking, the financial services industry is not known for its dexterity or agility. But in the modern world, malleability and rapid iteration, not to mention fast pleasure, are exactly what customers and business owners want and, increasingly, what they need. Processes that used to take days, weeks, or even months to complete are now significantly shortened by the use of fintech. Fintech also has the potential to enhance financial inclusion. This is because, in some regions of the world, where governmental or institutional assistance is limited, fintech satisfies the requirements of those who are not banked. Because it is based on ones and zeros rather than human skills and opinions, fintech can expedite historically cumbersome processes, which is one of the reasons why it is so successful. Although many financial technology platforms incorporate aspects of both traditional brokers and advisors as well as algorithms, some platforms assist users in navigating financially challenging tasks without any interaction with a human being at all. Consumers today can avoid visiting traditional bank branches for a variety of financial transactions, including the application process for loans, lending club, and mortgages, better. It is no longer necessary for casual investors to sit down in person with financial specialists to meticulously go over the ins and outs of their portfolios. Instead, these investors may now investigate their alternatives online and even seek the assistance of chatbots to make judgments. It is not necessary to look any further than robo-advisors to see how much further fintech has taken the world of financial services into a reality reminiscent of the Jetsons. These online platforms make investment recommendations and offer financial planning guidance based on algorithmic calculations and automated processes, with little to no oversight from actual humans. Betterment, a financial counseling service that calls itself the Smart Money Manager, is one of the platforms in this sector that was selected for inclusion in the 2020 Forbes Fintech 50 list. In the end, the response to the issue of how fintech influences your life will depend on the specifics of each situation. Aside from activities such as online account monitoring, which has become an integral part of day-to-day -day banking, the impact of fintech on your life is a personal matter that is determined by how many services you choose to connect with. You are free to delve as deeply as you like, or you can choose to remain on the surface. Is fintech safe? Engaging with fintech, many of which remain largely unregulated, particularly in the Wild West domain of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology, can lead to unwanted or unanticipated danger exposure. This is because engaging with fintech is like engaging with a Wild West company. The notion that financial technology companies, or fintech, adhere to a higher moral standard than giant commercial banks is turning out to be entirely unfounded. According to the fintech expert Ron Shevlin, banks and customers who engaged in fintech fetishism and excessive optimism associated with the industry's early iterations are now facing a harsh reality check as a result of the fact that many promising startups are encountering obstacles both as a direct result of the COVID-19 pandemic and independently of it. It is wise to view glamorous yet unproven fintech and their grandiose claims with a fair dose of skepticism because of the nature of their business. Large-scale data security breaches are becoming increasingly common as the quantity and importance of digital data continue to grow and become more integrated into people's everyday lives. These dangers are now more prominent in the public's mind as a result of recent hacks, particularly high-profile thefts of Bitcoin. To this day, there is no general agreement on whether or not the risks posed by fintech solutions are acceptable. In light of the breadth and depth of the growth of fintech, it is quite unlikely that such guarantees will be easy to obtain. However, it is important for customers to exercise caution, according to a survey conducted by E&AMP, why, 71% of respondents who have adopted fintech services agreed with the statement I worry about the security of my data while dealing with companies online. Fintech as well as new technology. 
The distributed ledger technology that lies at the heart of blockchains and paves the way for the creation of cryptocurrencies is possibly the most important of all the innovations that have affected financial services. However, developing technologies with less public attention could have an even greater impact in the future. The following are some of the most intriguing things connected to the Internet. Sensors that enable contactless transactions are a good illustration of this, as are automated teller machines ATMs, that can detect how many clients are waiting in line. Mixed realities, such as augmented and virtual reality. One of the possible applications for these technologies, which are still in their infancy, is virtual stock trading. Smart contracts. Contracts that can execute automatically when specific circumstances are satisfied can improve the safety of a transaction while also increasing its efficiency and reducing its overall cost. Bots. These systems, which automate repetitive processes and are also known as robotic process automation, can free up humans from mundane work and enable them to focus on things that are more useful to society. Voice-enabled payments. People may check their accounts, transfer money, and finish their purchases all by simply speaking on their smartphones equipped with voice recognition software. What opportunities does the future hold for fintech? No one can say for definite what kinds of financial technology advancements are on the horizon, and the disorder brought on by the epidemic has made this uncertainty much more severe. As a result of their customers' financial difficulties, some fintech companies have been forced to lay off employees or reduce the number of employees they employ, and others are having trouble securing capital from investors. At the same time, the demand for financial technology fintech, is possibly at an all-time high. Companies and banking consumers are more dependent on technology to assist them in navigating their financial livelihoods. Larger and more long-term tendencies for the future of fintech are still generally intact, despite the current economic uncertainties. It appears inevitable that legacy banks and fintech companies will combine their operations, form alliances, and continue to work together. And consumers should expect to see a continual rise of companies promising glittering, headline-worthy services such as blockchain, cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, and peer-to-peer -peer transactions. This trend is likely to continue for the foreseeable future. Bottom line. The use of fintech is now so widespread in the financial services industry that one might almost call it ubiquitous. Consumers, enterprises, and various types of financial services companies are increasingly resorting to inventive combinations of software, hardware, and data to create and offer both new and traditional forms of financial products and services. It looks that the influence of fintech will only increase in the years to come since it has already become deeply embedded in the structure of our current financial system. Do you like this video? Submit your feedback in our comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel for more videos.